from WFSB, this is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, February 7th. I'm Nicole Nalepa with your top stories today. After two racially charged incidents within the walls of Ram High School in Hebron, the district is taking action and accountability. Tonight at 630, school officials are inviting Joelle Murchison, a local leader on diversity and inclusion, to talk with families about the incident. The call to action was triggered after two incidents took place over the last six months. Most recently, a student reported a racially charged message scraped into the bathroom stall door. Back in November, a 17-year-old was charged with breach of peace after a noose was found in the boys' locker room of the high school. And parents in Granby are on high alert again as police investigate another situation in which a child brought a weapon to school. Police say a student at Granby Memorial Middle School was spotted showing a knife to some of their classmates. Less than a week ago, another child brought a knife into Wells Road Intermediate School. School leaders say the student involved in the incident at the middle school did not intend to hurt anyone, but police are still investigating both cases. And we're learning more this morning about the University of Hartford student who was arrested for allegedly making online threats. 18-year-old Tainoon Enkbat is accused of referencing guns and committing a shooting at a dorm using an app called Yik Yak. Enkbat has been banned from the UHAR campus. His lawyers say their client was only joking and it went too far. This morning, state police were investigating a crash that closed down parts of 95 southbound in Old Lyme. Now, the highway is back open this morning, but take a look at where the portion of the highway was closed yesterday. Our pinpoint nat tracker shows us exactly <clears throat> where, excuse me, it was right between exits 70 and 71. Now, we know the crash involved two vehicles, and unfortunately, there were reported injuries. However, we are still unclear as to how badly any of the victims were hurt. So we'll continue to get you some more information, including more information as soon as it's made available on the crash investigation. And, of course, you can get that information on air and online. In Hartford, people in the city's north end continue to deal with flooding issues. Dozens shared unbelievable stories about their homes and businesses being inundated with sewage backups during the heavy rain. And this was all made public in a meeting last night. Now, in response, the city says it's working on a solution, but it's going to take some time and some money to separate the century old sewer system from the storm system. Residents are calling on local leaders and the Environmental Protection Agency to get this problem solved. Scott? All right, thanks, Nicole. We are taking a look at a beautiful, beautiful sunrise this morning. 7.03 is now the time. Let's check out our Doppler. It is scanning the state dry. Got a really lovely start, so we want you to enjoy it. Uh, we do want to bring to your attention, though, there is a winter weather advisory that goes into effect tonight through uh, about midnight, from 7 to midnight tonight for Massachusetts. And that's just over the border here in Connecticut. So, you know what? There might be a little bit of frozen precip tonight through very early tomorrow morning. It's not going to be a big impact storm, but I do want to bring it to your attention. Let's bring this to your attention. Old Saybrook. Isn't that spectacular? Just, beautiful. It's just Look beautiful. That. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, look at the reflection on the little mini lighthouse right? too there. It's so pretty. <laughs> Good morning, Mystic. Good morning to you. Things look good there, nice and clear. Here's New Haven, 27 degrees. This temperature has been dropping steadily from 30 to 27 right now. And there's a bit of a breeze out of the north at 7. And we are taking a look at dry roads. You are good to go this morning. Don't forget the sunglasses. You're going to need them. Visibility is at a perfect 10. All right, 17 in Litchfield. A little chillier than normal. It's 19, typical overnight low. But we're above it. In Bristol, 22, Stores, 23, West Haven, 26. So the numbers aren't too bad, and you'll notice uh, not a whole lot of breeze out there. There's a gentle breeze that does make the temperatures feel a little bit cooler in parts of the state. Right now, Salisbury, 19, Willimantic, 19. You've got 21 in three locales, Putnam, Bradley, Danbury. And uh, we are down anywhere from 5 to 12 degrees cooler than where we were 24 hours ago. The winds are out of the north anywhere from 5 to 7. So just a gentle breeze out there does make the temperatures feel a little bit cooler. So grab that winter coat as you're heading out the door this morning. You're going to need it. Satellite and radar confirms not a lot going on. Let me take you all the way to the north and to the west. Underneath the banner, early warning weather, you're going to see some precipitation. That's the storm system, a very weak storm system that's going to be here in Connecticut by late this evening through very early tomorrow morning. And that is according to early warning futurecast. So mostly sunny skies to partly cloudy skies to mostly cloudy skies by this evening. Here comes the event. It's done and over. 
over by one o'clock in the morning and we get back to some beautiful weather tomorrow. So here's your temperature trend today up into the upper 30s, low 40s. Now the shoreline, this particular model depiction is showing upper 30s. I think we're going to be in the low to mid 40s. So I think we're going to be doing a little bit better than that with the mixture of sun and clouds. Cooler, partly sunny today. The sun is up, was up at 657. Sunsets at 513. And then your seven day forecast includes 50 amazing degrees tomorrow. 50. Thursday, rain after 4 p.m. through about midnight. Friday, a beautiful day with 56 degrees. That will be a record breaker if we do get to 56. And then unsettled weather for Saturday. Not a washout, but there will be some mixed precip around with a cooler day, cooler yet on Sunday. And Monday, 46 degrees, a little bit of a rebound there. All right, just about 7.06. Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. Parents and teachers in East Lyme are fighting a plan to cut jobs within the school system. District leaders recently introduced a new budget that would eliminate nearly 20 positions throughout East Lyme schools. Some of the jobs on the chopping block include paraprofessionals, technology education positions, and library aides. Critics fear the proposed cuts would lead to more learning gaps. Who are we really hurting? We're hurting the students. Haven't they lost enough? We need to move onward and upward past the COVID years. Sadly, these cuts are going to make East Lyme move backwards. The superintendent has said they tried to focus on jobs that would have the least impact on learning. A budget hearing for the Board of Ed is set for February 27th. And New Haven Mayor Justin Elliker is making plans to improve the city in the coming years. Yesterday, he discussed ways to tackle boosting safety and education. This is the first time Elliker has talked about some of these issues publicly since the pandemic. As a parent and as a individual who works in the community and with youth, um, one of the major issues is violence. This year we've already lost five members of our community to gun violence and their tragic senseless death have deepened our resolve and commitment to a holistic and multi-pronged approach to reducing gun violence. We've got a lot more work to do, but the way that we can do this is a recipe that we've used for years. It's being a city that welcomes everyone, that supports everyone, that ultimately works together. Even with a recent string of violent crimes, Mayor Elliker says the city is making steady and significant pro progress. And now changes on the state level. This morning we're learning more about the governor's plans for what could be the largest tax cut the state has seen in over 25 years. It would benefit middle class families earning less than $100,000. Couples filing jointly would save a maximum of nearly $600 per year. And single filers would save a maximum of nearly $300 per year. If this passes, it will be the largest tax cut in the state income tax since 1996. This is an income tax that's really um, going to be overwhelmingly focused on our working families, essential workers. And the governor will be highlighting these tax cut proposals in his State of the State address tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on your Tuesday morning. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day, everyone. Here's a beautiful view. Wow. Enjoy the sunrise. Enjoy the day. Be healthy. Stay positive.